Hey everyone, Ben Brown here, back in the basement tonight with some new toys. Now, if you've been following me on Instagram, you may recall a few months back, I had picked up a small desktop laser engraver. Um, I had a small commission job that needed some laser engraving, so it seemed to make sense at the time to pick up a little desktop laser engraver and have some fun with it. And it was a ton of fun for a little while. Um, I managed to get the job done and it died after about three weeks. So I spent a lot of back and forth with the seller, um, a lot of troubleshooting. They even sent me a new uh, laser head and that didn't fix the problem. This took months to resolve and it was a huge pain. The seller was really good about helping me out, but ultimately we just sort of called it quits. And I managed to get most of my money back. They didn't want me to ship this thing back overseas again. So here I am with a basically dead laser engraver. I figured I would fix this thing up eventually. However, the folks over at banggood.com came along and offered me up some merchandise to uh, show on video here. So we have what will hopefully be pieces to fix up this laser. So while this won't necessarily be a video on how to build your own desktop laser from scratch, uh, hopefully we can learn a few things from these components here and no matter what I will burn something either I'll burn up a power supply or a board but hopefully I'll burn something with a laser either way there will be smoke so if that interests you stick around we'll see what happens okay first things first let's see what we got safety first laser safety goggles Ooh, there we go now we're safe. Next up, laser module. Now my original laser was only half a watt, so I figured this was a good time to step things up and try for something a little bit stronger. Two and a half watts. So about five times of what we had before. Now, last time the thickest I could cut through was a piece of paper. Cardboard was stretching it. So we've now got five times the power. We'll see what we can do with this guy. Plenty of stickers and a power supply for the laser here for two and a half amps, 12 volts. There we go. Next up, we have our control board. Lots of plugs and wires, USB cable, our board. Here we go. And it looks relatively similar to the last one. Got a controller here, a couple stepper motor drivers here for the X and Y axes, power on with this end, and plugs for everything we should need. Power switch. So I'll have to jump online and get the documentation for this thing, but uh, there we have it. Obviously, lasers are dangerous. Use them with caution and read any warnings. This one can do some damage, so only point it at things you want to burn. Got a cooling fan on the back, a little power plug in the end here. This is a bit interesting because it's got a barrel jack on the end of the power cord, but there is no such connector on here. There's power coming in, but the laser connector does not fit this, so we're gonna have to uh, cut this off and wire it into one of these plugs. However, before we get that far, our power supply does have the right plug. So before we even put a controller board in the middle of all this, I can plug this in and just test out the laser and see how it goes. We got some burn marks. It's a pretty uh, unfocused beam. Let's see if we can tighten that up. That's much better. <laughs> That's awesome. So I know the laser works. Phase one complete. 
Now if we want to figure out how to hook up power to the laser, first we have to check the power going into it. So I'm getting negative voltage here, which means the red, the outside here, is not the positive. So if I put the positive in the center, negative out here, I'm reading a positive voltage. So therefore, the center pin on this connector is our positive input. Cut this off. Now we got to figure out which wire is that center connector. Odds are good since this is red and black, the red is going to be our positive, but we'll want to verify that. So we'll strip that wire back and do a little continuity test. So we'll put one end on our red wire and one end here. And the multimeter is beeping. So that confirms red is our positive wire. And as a general rule, red wire is positive, but it's always good to make sure. All set. Okay, now before we completely disconnect the old board here, let's uh, take a look at what we've got. Now, this board here uh, looks to be a pretty similar design to my new board here. Uh, looks like an Arduino-based controller and a couple of uh, stepper motor drivers over here. And the hookups are quite similar. And actually, I've noticed that the wiring leads that came with the new board actually have the same plug as my old board. So I can probably reuse my existing wiring and hook it up to the new board, assuming the pinouts all line up like they should. <clears throat> so it looks like this one's already been labeled for me as the Y-axis motor. There we go, X-axis. And then up here, we have the laser wiring, and this will be hooked up to the new laser on the other end. So we'll save that. And this is, it's labeled here as another 5 volt output. That's running up to where the laser is, but it's actually not being used on this board. But So we may not use it on the next one, that's fine. <clears throat> so that's all disconnected. These standoffs will come in handy for the new board. Take these apart. And we'll use these on the new board. Now, of course, the new board is bigger than the old one, so I won't be able to use the plexiglass mounts, but we'll make something new for that. So, let's get these standoffs transferred. Now this four wire connector is hooked up to one of my stepper motors on the other side. And with a four wire stepper motor there's two coils of wire running through the, the motor itself. Now I know from the pinout diagram the left two points are one coil and the other two points are another coil. So if I touch the two on the end here, check for resistance, I should get a little bit of resistance there. So there's about two ohms. So that's one of the coils, and if I go like the first and third here, they're not connected. So third and fourth, again we've got some resistance there, so those are definitely my two coils. So being that the other board was so similar, <clears throat> I've got the same plugs, they appear to be wired up the same way, I think it's a pretty safe bet that I can hook this up to the new board as is. It's my y-axis and my x-axis. 
I'm not going to hook up the laser or anything yet because I don't even have that wired up, but that's a good start. Now getting the laser itself out wasn't too difficult. It's just a matter of a few nuts and bolts holding it onto the, onto the laser engraver. But you'll notice that the, the old laser unit, the half watt laser, looks almost identical to the two and a half watt that I just picked up. Um, it's pretty much identical housing to the new laser. So lucky for me, that means all of the mounting holes and bolts lined up and fit just perfectly. So this was just a matter of pulling out the old one and installing the new one. Didn't have to make anything new just yet. As long as I've got this off the machine, one of my complaints with this laser here is that to focus it, you have to reach down and twist the lens focus here. And the only way you can tell if it's focused is when the laser is on. So it's actually shooting a laser out so you can see the point and focus it till it's nice and sharp. But when this thing is shooting a laser that could potentially burn you, I don't like sticking my fingers down here because I'm worried that I'm going to slip or squeeze too hard and burn myself on the laser. So if I can adjust the focus without getting quite so close to the laser, that would be good. So I'm just going to make a little uh, wheel here to slip over the lens just to make this bigger. So I have something bigger to grab onto without getting quite so close to the actual laser point. So let's measure this up, and I think we can print something to slip over that. So I jumped into Fusion 360 and started making a basic model of the end of the laser so I could see how big everything is in relation to each other. And I set up a new component for the focus wheel, as I'm calling it, and just made a donut shape to fit around the lens of the laser. And then decided to set up a few parameters here so I could experiment with the number of teeth. Um, I wanted to make this thing look like a gear, mainly just so I had uh, a lot of points to make it easier to grip. So here we're modeling out one of the cutouts for the quote-unquote gear teeth. Put a little chamfer on those corners to make it angle out a bit. Fill at the edges and pattern that around the circle. There we go. And we'll cut a little bit out of the center because we don't need this thing to be solid plastic all the way through and it'll just look cool. So we'll sketch out one of those cutouts. Fill at the edges and pattern it around. Looks pretty good but my holes don't quite line up with the, uh, the gear teeth so we'll move those over a little bit and we've got a good looking focus wheel. Just run that through the 3D printer. Slide it onto the laser. And now I can focus the laser and keep my fingers back at a relatively safe distance. So next we need a way to mount this control board to the frame of the laser engraver, just like the old one was, so it can stay attached. So I started out by measuring up this control board, get its overall dimensions and the uh, spacing for the four mounting holes. And then also I measured up the mounting hole pattern so I could mount it to the extrusion of the frame itself. Once I had all my dimensions, I brought that into Fusion 360 again and modeled up the mounting plate based on what I'd measured. So I put a rectangular hole pattern around the outside for the outside holes and another pattern inside for the holes to mount it to the aluminum extrusion. And then once the part was designed, I created a drawing, added some dimensions, but the dimensions aren't really necessary because we're gonna print this out at full size. And most importantly, added some center marks for each of the holes to help me locate them. Once that drawing was done, we saved it out to a PDF, printed it off, and brought it out to the shop. So I cut out a couple pieces of acrylic to the, the overall dimensions of the plates that I needed, and just taped them together here because both pieces are gonna need the four corner holes drilled out. So I laid the acrylic pieces down on the drawing and used my center marks to mark each of the holes that I need to drill. 
Once the outside corners were drilled through, I took the tape off, removed one of the pieces, and then drilled the remaining four holes for mounting it to the frame. Now there is a trick to removing the rough edges on acrylic, and that's by hitting it quick with a, uh, with a propane torch, but I got a little bit too close to mine and ended up uh, almost melting the edge, so I decided to cut my losses before I destroyed the part and just ran over to the sander and uh, cleaned up the edges that way. So I started off by attaching the spacers to the base plate and attaching the base plate to the frame of the laser engraver. So that was mounted in place. Then added the board, hooked up my wires, and finally added on the outside plate just to keep all the electronics somewhat protected. Now this board in particular appears to support two different kinds of lasers, those with a three-wire connection and those with a two-wire connection. Since this laser is just a two-wire laser, uh, according to the pinout, we actually hook that up to the port that's labeled as the motor port. So we hook that up to the motor port and trace those wires back over to where they actually hook up to the laser. So I strip those wires back, solder them onto the leads coming off of the laser, and then protected those joints with a little bit of heat shrink tubing. And now our laser is connected into the control board. So where do we stand on the whole laser project? Overall, I got pretty lucky in that this laser and it was pretty well compatible with the, with the new board. The wiring matched up pretty well, and so I didn't have to rewire much of it. Everything came together pretty nicely. The focusing wheel on the laser, I'm really happy with. Software was a, was a bit difficult to get started originally, um, but I got the, the factory software up and running, made sure that the board and the laser actually worked uh, with the software that was shipped with it. You know, From there, I was able to uh, flash the firmware here with the Garble firmware, since this is basically just an Arduino Nano on the board. Didn't take too long to figure that out and get it configured. 10 millimeters. So this will work just great. Now the laser itself, you know, for two and a half watts, it is about five times stronger than what I had before. So I'm pretty happy about that. Now it's still not gonna cut through real thick material, but um, it should make a, a bit faster work of cutting through thinner stuff and, and just burning images onto material. You know, not gonna, like I said, it's not gonna cut real thick material, but we can definitely have some fun with this. Next steps going forward with this thing. Um, now that I've got it working with LaserWeb on the PC, and I've learned my way around that piece of software, next step is to get LaserWeb up and running on uh, my Raspberry Pi here. It's, it's in here. Um, since LaserWeb runs on a Raspberry Pi, I can mount this to the laser, have it run the necessary software on here, um, and then I can just keep this attached to the laser and set it up from any laptop or desktop on the network. So I think that'll make things a little bit easier to work with. You know, there'll be a little bit more software tinkering to get this up and running with the laser. If that's something you'd be interested in seeing here, let me know. Yeah, next steps is uh, getting LaserWeb running on the Pi, <clears throat> setting this up somewhere where I can get some good ventilation so I can work on projects without uh, having to uh, air out my office when I'm done. Once again, really happy to get this thing up and running again. Uh, special thanks to banggood.com for setting me up with a new laser and control board for this unit. I'll include some links below in the video description that you can check out for discount codes. And um, so special thanks to them. Uh, we're going to have some fun with this laser here. I don't have many plans for it just yet. Uh, so if you've got any creative or crazy ideas for a low power laser, throw them in the comments down below. We'll see what we can do with this thing. I think that's enough for one video. Thanks for sticking around and watching, and we'll see you next time.